Hey everyone, and today I'm going to show you how I painted this vulture right here. Uh, I figured I would do a vulture painting for the month of October just because they're the kind of creatures that don't get enough attention, I think, uh, and they play such an interesting role here in the Florida ecosystem. So as you can see, I'm taking a somewhat medium flat brush and some straight up black and I'm just starting to map out all the darkest areas and values on my vulture. And you can see I'm also adding in a little bit of texture at this point, uh, not too worried about that. And you can see me mapping out each individual feather on the portion of the wing that's showing as well. and just going in all the areas where the darkest values will be found. Now, if you wanted to, you could make your own black if you wanted to add more uh, colors in there, just to give it a bit more depth and interest. I usually make my black by mixing purple, Prussian blue, and a bit of brown, uh, and that makes a really nice black uh, with an interesting sort of depth to it. Next, I'm adding a little bit of uh, white to my black to make this sort of dark grayish mid-tone and I'm going in all the areas where it's not the brightest but it's not the darkest. So it's just the mid-tone that I'm doing here and I'm mapping out all of that area. And then finally adding the lightest values by mixing a little bit more white and adding in the highlighted sort of areas throughout the vulture's body. And I like to use my finger to blend a lot. I just find it a lot easier to do that. I'm also taking a rake brush, which is a brush that has sort of like a rake pattern in the bristles. And I'm using this whilst the paint is still wet to just blend them together a little bit and soften any harsh edges that the uh, values may have formed. You'll notice I've left the beak for now. I'm going to do the beak a little later on just because it just makes things a little easier to focus on the actual main body of the vulture rather than the beak as well. So just going in with a bit more black now and just deepening up any of those shadows. You'll notice that I go back and forth between my darkest and lightest colors because it's just easier to build up those values rather than trying to get them all done in one stage. Um, so remember, just keep going back and forth and building up those layers. When you're doing your values, you want to pick a direction that your light source is coming from. So in this case, I've tried to make the light source come from the right hand side of the vulture where he is uh, looking from, the direction he's looking from. Here I'm also filling in the beak and I'm just using that simple gray color, that mid-tone that we were using earlier and a little bit of darkness to uh, really make the sharper edges stand out. Vultures have sort of this weird little segment at the very tip of their beaks, so I made sure to include that as well. And now, excuse the switch of camera angles. <laughs> it's a new day where I'm working on it. You can see me going in with the rake brush right here and that sort of mid gray tone and I'm going to start to really focus on the textures of the vulture. I really want to start building up that feathery sort of uh, layer of the vulture and I did make him look a little bit fluffy I think but that's okay. So I'm pretty much putting this almost everywhere throughout the vulture. I am leaving gaps in between the feathers. Uh, leaving gaps is going to make your feathers look more realistic and make them stand out better. Remember, animal fur, feathers, anything of the sort, if you're doing hair, 
it all naturally clumps up, uh, especially the longer it gets as well. So just make sure you keep that in mind when you are painting. Fur feathers naturally clumps, so make sure you have that different direction in the feathers going. Then switching to that lighter tone by mixing a bit more white into my paint and starting to really map out the highlights better in my vulture. Again, thinking about where that light source is coming from. Just doing it pretty much all over the body, leaving a few patches here and there that are not so bright. And also don't forget the wrinkles on their face. I'm using my finger to blend it out a little bit and soften the edges. Careful about um, overdoing it on the face, you want to make sure those wrinkles are more clearly defined. Next, I'm going back in with that black again, like I said, back and forth, and deepening up any more shadows. As you can see, one side of his face or his body is going to be darker than the other due to the light source that I have picked. So you want the shadows to somewhat make sense. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know, you have a bit of uh, creative license if you like, but uh, do try to keep it as accurate as you can. Also doing some shading on the beak and around the eyes and face. So a quick cut there, just so you can see sort of what I'm doing with the black there. I've really deepened up some of those feathers or the feathers on the body. The next stage, I'm actually taking a mixture of that um, black mix that I was saying earlier. So brown, purple, and blue mixed in really well. I actually added a bit more purple um, than any of the other colors. And I'm now using a glazing mixture. Uh, if you don't have glaze, you can use water. Just really water down your paints so that it's more of a tint of color over the top. Now, before you glaze anything, you want to make sure that your underpaintings that you've done already are completely dry. Otherwise, you're going to get colors mixing and it's gonna look really muddy and messy. So I'm just glazing this purplish, um, blackish color over the vulture to really deepen up those shadows. Excuse the random person walking in the back. <laughs> And then I'm gonna let that dry again. And I'm, I'm going in with my brightest gray. This is not white, this is just a really light gray. And I'm gonna to start to really make those highlights pop out of the body. So starting with the face and the beak and just going in and really smoothing those out and blending them into the darks. Trying again to make sense of the lights and the shadows. And I did take a couple of little short videos for um, this painting just because I felt like I wanted to do that. So if you see my phone pop up every now and then, it's just a short video I'm making. <laughs> and then again, bringing that lightest color into the fur, choosing more selectively the places I put it. You don't want to cover the whole body with this, but you do want to, you know, really define some areas and make them stand out better. Now you can't see too much of the bottom of the painting because of the angle of the camera where the feathers are a little more segmented, but you do want to make a clear definition between each of the feathers. Here with the eye, I'm just taking straight black and filling it in and then going in with some brighter gray, like not white yet, just bright gray. And I am starting to put tiny sort of drops of highlights along the face and the beak and to make the nose a little more defined, rubbing a little bit of that gray into the eye to give it a shine. Now he's looking a little bit stark colored, but that's okay because glazing is just a magical substance. <laughs> you can really bring up the vibrancy, the colors, you can introduce other colors to really make him stand out. 
I'm just going to briefly talk about what I'm doing here. I decided that I wanted to add a surreal element to this painting because I am a surreal animal artist. So I decided to add some mushrooms and toadstools uh, growing out from the vulture and sort of like he's plucking them out of his body. So he's holding some in his mouth. So I'm just starting by doing the stalks mapping out where they're going to be coming from, where they're growing from. I only decided to do two kinds, like some little brown mushrooms and some red mushrooms. So those are the little roots that I'm going for here. It's really straightforward. All I'm doing is just blocking in where the mushroom heads are gonna go. Um, and then obviously working with the values, the shading and highlights, etc., etc. This part did take quite a while um, just because mapping out all the individual little mushrooms was you know a bit painstaking but it was fine in the end. I thought about adding a few more different kinds but honestly I was kind of like eh, I'm happy with what I have so far. Um, the next stage on the volatile will basically be glazing again. I'm going to glaze on two different colors or three I should say. The first color is purple just straight up dioxine purple um, and that's really going to bring out the shadows better and give more of depth to the vulture. The second color is like this raw sienna color uh, and this is to help match the background to the vulture a little bit and then the third color just being a sort of cadmium deep yellow color which is just going to help things stand out give it the illusion that uh, some of his feathers are catching in the sunlight if you like. So just doing some detailing on the mushrooms, bringing out the highlights in them, bringing in the shadows, uh, you know, just making sure they're a little more defined against the vulture. And I'll actually bring some of that glazing that I'm going to do in a minute into the mushrooms to really bring the whole thing together, um, which you'll see me somewhat do here. So I'm starting with that purple color. I'm focusing the purple in the shadow areas of the vulture. Uh, this is gonna help bring out the shadows better, give them some more depth. You might want to do a couple of layers of glaze. Remember your painting or your underpainting needs to be completely dry before you do any kind of glazing uh, at all. That way it doesn't mix. Here I'm going in with that burnt sienna color. You can see it's quite, um, it's kind of subtle right now, but the more layers you add, the more intense it can be. I also decided to glaze over the eye a little bit. Um, I had some red paint mixed over from my uh, mushroom paintings that I was doing, so it kind of mixed in with the glaze a little bit, but I'm not mad about it because it actually turned out really well. And so that's how I created this little vulture painting. Once you've done your glazes, you can go back over with your brightest highlights and add a few of those uh, around the vulture. The lighter you go, the fewer sort of highlights you wanna add, so that dark layer really stands out. So I hope you enjoyed this painting tutorial of this vulture here. Vultures are I think a little bit of an underdog when it comes to the animals here in Florida. They are actually quite helpful little critters and I'm actually thinking of making the vulture a part of my helpful critter series where I highlight the animals that are typically seen as pests or just not very popular uh, because they do a great service to our ecosystem. If you liked this video, then please give it a thumbs up. It takes two seconds to do that. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And thank you so much for sticking around and watching the video. It means a lot.